Just take a moment to allow your eyes to close and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to relax, I'm just going to tell this sleep meditation in the background. And while I tell this sleep meditation in the background, I don't know whether you'll drift asleep faster to the sound of my words or to the spaces between my words. And as you begin to comfortably fall asleep, you can have a sense of a woman out walking one day. And she's walking along the edge of a river There's tall grass, bees, butterflies, and other insects flying among wildflowers. She can smell the smell from all the different flowers, noticing different distinct smells as she passes those different colored flowers, catching a scent of certain flowers as a gust of wind blows gently across the meadow and she can hear that flowing water on one side of her as it bubbles and trickles. Off the other side of the meadow she can hear the rustling of the leaves of some nearby woods. She can notice the sounds of birds in the trees and notice how as she walks along the birds seem to start and stop as if they know her position that just as she thinks she's getting closer to birds she can hear singing those birds quieten down and as they quieten down so she begins to hear more birds behind her and becomes more aware of the birds she's approaching. But as she continues to approach, so those birds quieten down as if they don't want to reveal their exact location. And she's just calmly walking along the edge of this river She can smell that slight watery smell in the air. She can notice that freshness, almost as if that water is purifying the air near this river. And she follows that river all the way towards a cliff edge. And near that cliff, she can see out, miles around, looking out over a vast vista of trees, meadow, all that wildlife down there. She can see deer. She can see in the distance a fox walking through the tall grass. She can see a hovering bird of prey. And from her vantage point, she's looking down on the top of that hovering bird of prey. And she can hear that river as it tumbles over the edge of the cliff. And down below the cliff she can see that waterfall, she can see the water spraying up, filling a small lake which feeds into narrowing down to be another river, continuing that river on. And the river seems to be sparkling and shining in the sunlight as it weaves through the landscape off towards the horizon. 
and the sun is just reaching that perfect point in the sky, that golden hour, where it's at just the right angle to illuminate everything with the most beauty. And she sits down near the edge of this cliff and gazes out over that view. And she can feel that comfortable breeze on her skin. She can hear the sounds behind her of the birds in the trees, of that bubbling water, and then of that waterfall down beside her. And she knows that she has to find a way down. And she wants to find a way down before it's dark. But she also wants to just sit a moment. Take in the view. Take in the most of this light. And after a short while of sitting, relaxing, absorbed in the moment, just looking out over that view, feeling with her fingertips that grass beside her, she stands up, she follows that cliff along away from the river. She heads over towards the trees and the trees end near the top of the cliff. She ties a rope around one of the trunks of a tree. She pulls on that rope, checks that it's secure. And then calmly and comfortably she walks over to the cliff edge. She wraps the rope carefully around her waist in such a way that she can lower herself down gently. She turns with her back to the cliff, holding that rope tight and taut. And she backs up gently and carefully, glancing behind her, checking where she is holding the rope with one hand behind her back, the rope with the other hand in front of her, carefully feeding that rope around her. And she backs up so that the heels of her feet are over the edge of the cliff. And then she holds her feet steady, knees slightly bent, and very carefully she loosens and feeds that rope through from the back to the front. As she gently, comfortably and confidently tips herself over the edge of that cliff until her back is facing towards the ground. And then she calmly and relax, begins to walk down the side of that cliff. And as she descends that cliff, so the sounds from the top of the cliff begin to fade away. And she can hear the increasing sound of that water splashing down at the bottom of the waterfall. She can feel that rope as it passes through her hands, as it moves around her body. She can feel the tension in that rope as she so calmly, so gently lowers herself down and descends and just walks all the way down that cliff. And then when she's about a leg's distance 
from the bottom. She steps off the cliff with one foot and puts the foot flat on the ground. Straightens her body up while lowering the other foot to the ground. And then removes the rope from around her body. Loops it up and just places it neatly at the foot of this cliff. And she knows she can always climb back up this way when she returns. And she walks back to the lake and begins to walk around that lake. And she follows the lake round all the way all the way to where the river continues, the other side of the lake. And the sun now is almost fully set over the horizon. The sky in one direction is dark blue, where she can just notice a few of those stars beginning to appear in the sky. The other direction the shades of oranges, yellows, and a lighter blue as it transitions somewhere in the middle of the sky with the occasional wispy cloud almost hanging in the sky and a slight rainbow in some of those high up wispy clouds. And as the sun fully sets over the horizon and all that's left is the orange glow. She stops on that piece of river. She moves a little bit away from the water's edge. Sets up a camp. Lights a fire settles down just inside the tent. She can feel the warmth of that fire on her hands, on her cheeks. As she rests, just sitting just inside that tent. She can hear the river behind the fire, that constant, steady, trickling, bubbling sound. And the fire crackling. The fire occasionally being blasted by little gusts of wind and making stronger sounds before calming again. And as that light dims so the only light here is the light of the stars and the glow from the fire. And as she gazes at that dancing glow of the fire, she cooks herself something to eat. She can hear the movement of the sides of the tent with each blow of breeze and she finds the experience the ambience here so relaxing that distant sound of crickets the occasional chirp of birds settling down for the night in the trees The occasional sound of flapping wings, of birds just moving around, finding just the perfect place to fall asleep. The occasional splosh in the water, as observant fish pop their faces above the water to nab little bugs out the air. 
before splashing back under the water again. And as the fire relaxes and burns down, it just becomes a comfortable glow outside the tent. She backs up into the tent, having eaten her food. And for a little while, she decides just to rest back on a sleeping bag. With the tent open for now, just letting some of that air in. Relaxing for a moment rather than falling straight asleep. Just being able to look out of that tent. Out over that glowing fire and just enjoying the moment. Being able to breathe in that comfortable air from outside the tent. And then after a while, she decides it's time now to sleep. She sits up, zips the front of the tent up, lies back down, snuggles up into her sleeping bag. Feeling how soft and padded that is. And begins to relax and drift and float comfortably asleep. And as she drifts and floats comfortably asleep, she finds her mind wandering. finds her mind drifting to a strange world. She's walking down a footpath from her front door, only her front door isn't on her house. It seems to be floating just above the footpath with nothing around it. There just seems to be a grey white in all directions, almost like looking into dense fog with just that door floating there. But she feels so comfortable and she walks down that footpath to the end of the footpath. She goes to the mailbox at the end of the footpath. She opens that mailbox and finds a letter. And she takes that letter out. And it just has her name written on it. And she opens the envelope and begins to read that letter. And as she begins to read, so she notices that the ink that this is written in seems to sparkle and glow. It seems to be written in almost like a sparkly, glittery, purple ink. And she reads that glistening writing. And it tells her that as you read this, you're going to begin to go on a journey. A journey of inner discovery. And this journey of inner discovery will begin when the horse arrives 
and not a moment sooner, and the horse won't arrive until it's time, and it's not time yet. You'll know when it's time, because the horse will be here. And don't try too hard to work all this out. Because if you try hard to work this out, you'll get lost in thought. You'll go round in wonder. You'll discover curiosity and find yourself losing your place while reading this letter. And while you read this letter, you may wonder about the waffle and whether the waffle is what you're reading or what you ate for breakfast and sometimes things can be curious and sometimes they can get curiouser and curiouser but you can keep reading wondering and discovering because the horse will arrive when it's time and your journey of discovery will help you to discover harmony and you'll learn balance and what that means to you and you can brush up on some skills all the best Dan And she folded the letter up and could hear some clipping and clopping down the street. But in every direction she looked was just a grey, foggy look. She placed that letter back in the envelope and put that envelope into a pocket. She had a sense of confusion as a horse appeared almost glowing and white out of the fog as if the only space that exists is the path and a short distance from the path and the mailbox And this horse has somehow magically just come into existence here. And the horse stops in front of the path. Let's out a breath. She walks over. Gently touches the neck of the horse with her hand. She can feel the side of the neck of the horse. She can feel the warmth, the softness, the firmness, that smell of the horse. She climbed onto the horse's back and it began to trot away from the path. And as it did, so the fog began to clear and the path and the mailbox disappeared and as the fog cleared she found herself trotting through some woodland on a beautiful spring day sounds of birds coming from all directions light dancing through the leaves on the path in front of her. The sound of the rustling of the leaves. As she bobbed up and down while the horse trotted through this woodland. And she didn't have any reins and didn't feel that she had any control over the horse. The horse seemed to just know where it was going. And so she just sat on that horse 
and felt that the experience was so calming, so comfortable, and such a beautiful experience, such beautiful environment. She didn't mind not knowing where the horse was going. She didn't mind not understanding what was going on. And as that horse continued, it eventually turned off this path and turned down a narrower path. And she followed that narrower path on that horse. And she could notice that there was a clearing up ahead. And as the horse reached the clearing, she could see a cottage. And there was someone sitting, swinging on a rocking chair outside that cottage. Just enjoying, relaxing in this weather. And the most unusual weather vane on top of the cottage. And the horse pulled up at the cottage and then stopped. And the woman assumed this is where she had to dismount. So she got off of the horse and walked towards that cottage. And she went over to the person sat outside this cottage who stopped rocking, had a beaming smile and gestured for her to sit on the seat opposite. So she sat down on the seat opposite. And they said that they're going to play a game. And the woman was curious about this game, about why someone would want to play a game. And she got out what looked like a chessboard. Only instead of chess pieces. Each piece looked like a different mushroom. There were short, squat mushrooms at the front. There were tall mushrooms at the sides. There was a mushroom that had a bright red top with some white spots in the middle. And next to that was a tall and slender mushroom that was very similar in color. And beside that were some small black mushrooms that when you picked them up and looked, had the softest undersides, that if you gently tapped them, seemed to leave the finest powder on the board. And the woman asked, what are we playing? And the person said that they were playing their version of chess. And so they began. And then this person took one of the small front mushrooms. And instead of just putting it out of play, they ate it. And the woman 
was confused. And they said, each mushroom you take of the opponent, you eat. There's nothing confusing in that. You're playing with edible pieces. And so the woman carried on playing. And to start with, she felt that she was losing. But then there was something about the experience that helped her to begin to have this sense that she learned the patterns and the play style of her opponent. She'd been paying attention. And now she started winning. But she realized that there was a problem with starting to win. That as you start to win, so you eat more of the opponent's mushrooms. And the more of the opponent's mushrooms she was eating, the more this environment began to change. She first noticed the sky beginning to turn into multiple different colours swirling around like paint on water. And those colours began to get more and more vivid. And then she noticed as she carried on that the trees began to pulse and move. And that everything began to look almost like she was inside a painting. And eventually she won. But at the point that she'd won, the only thing left that wasn't moving was one space of black and this woman and the horse and the opponent. And so she looked at those things that were stable. And the opponent said, your portal awaits and gestured towards the black hole. And the woman stood up and she worried that with everything moving and twisting and turning, like she's walking through a living painting, that she wouldn't be able to walk steady but as she started taking steps, so she found that she could walk steady perfectly fine. And she walked into that black hole and discovered that it was a long tunnel, almost like a deep cave inside a painting. And as she walked in, it got darker and darker. And then after a while, as her eyes began to adjust, she noticed a slight glow. She could hear a slight dripping. And it was a slight, almost like an electric blue glow and she walked towards that electric blue glow and found the softest, most incredible looking moss. She reached down, touched it with her fingertips, could feel that damp, soft carpet of moss that seemed to be glowing with a slight electric blue glow. And she gathered up a large handful of that moss. And she used that moss as a way of lighting her way. While she continued her journey 
through this tunnel. And this moss in her hand gave a soft, comfortable blue glow to the sides of the cave, lighting it just enough for her to find her way through. And as she walked along, she saw what looked like a damp piece of wood lying on the ground, almost like a plank just lying there. And she only saw it because the glow from the moss illuminated the damp surface on that wood. And she walked comfortably across that plank to the other side. And she could see in the distance a light, just the tiniest light of the exit of this tunnel, the exit of this cave. She could feel the coolness, the calmness in this cave. And then she saw a sign. that just said, perception is everything. And then there was a space. And then it said, turn around. And she turned around. And she saw that from this angle, that that plank was over an incredibly deep drop. And she stepped back slightly. And she looked down at that drop. And she realized that she walked across that plank perfectly fine. But was unsure whether she would be able to walk back across that plank. Now she knows there's a massive drop beneath it. And she understood the sign. And she turned around and carried on. And as she reached the exit of the cave, she placed that moss down, wiped her hands on her legs, to dry them off and headed out into the sunlight and as she headed out into the sunlight she was surprised to see a beautiful valley distant mountains She could see the snow on the top of those mountains. She could see the way clouds were bashing into the mountains and rising up, being stopped by those mountains. And she wondered where she was. She could see down there in this valley, a herd of zebra, she could see a pool of water, and wild animals gathered around that pool, drinking, and then walking away to carry on their own journeys. And when the time was right, she walked down to that pool of water herself. And when she got down to that water, she had a drink of some of that water. 
and she looked around herself. And she was aware of how solid everything was here. How real everything was here, compared to where she walked in. And as she was drinking that water, so she could feel the warmth of the water. And so she decided to go in that water for a little swim. She almost just felt a compulsion to take this moment to relax. And she walked into that water up to her waist and then lowered herself into the warm water and pushed herself through the water turned onto her back and just floated on that water and she could feel the warmth of the sun on her face and as she felt that warmth of the sun so she allowed her eyes to close and while she floated there she felt almost like she was just floating in space floating weightless resting on that water And while she rested there, floating on the water, she wondered what all this meant, what the purpose of this journey has been. She's aware that she's dreaming, but it's curious what her mind is trying to teach her about harmony, healing, about balance. and how this all relates to her real life journey. And then after a while of resting there, she hears the gentle, very distant rumble of thunder. So she takes time to swim back to the shore She can see that the storm's way off in the distance, over near the mountains. That where she is, it's still sunny. And she sits there for a while, drying off in the sun, wondering why she's been led to hear. And after drying off in the sun, she looks around herself, to see if there's any clues. And she sees off in the distance, near the trees something glistening. She walks over to that location. And at that location, she has this sense of something talking to her. Almost talking straight to her mind. Telling her to open the small box that's by the tree. And it's the stones on the box that are glistening in the light. And so she reaches down, lifts the lid on that box. And inside the box, she finds what looks like just a simple stone 
There doesn't seem to be anything particularly special about it other than its softness. Almost like it's been polished and looked after. And wrapped around that stone is a piece of red material tied into a bow and tucked into that bow is a rolled up thin piece of paper and so she opens the bow she gets that paper she opens the paper she reads what it says on that paper. It just says, my gift to you, keep this on you, always. And she doesn't know whether it actually is a gift to her or not. But no one else has received this. No one else has been here. And her experience has led her here. So she takes that stone, puts it in her pocket, puts everything else back in the box and closes the lid. And as she closes the lid, so everything around her begins to turn white again. Almost like a fog has set in around her again. And she finds herself stood on a path next to the mailbox. She turns around and can see her floating front door. She wonders whether she's supposed to walk inside and she walks towards that door, reaches the door handle, opens the door, and everything just looks dark the other side of the door, but she steps through that door, and as she does she becomes aware of the sound of rain on the tent, And aware that she's in that half asleep, half awake state in the tent. Just feeling so deeply relaxed, listening to that rain. And then she hears the occasional chirping of a bird. And she hasn't opened her eyes yet, she just listens. And she wonders whether perhaps morning is approaching. And because she hasn't opened her eyes, and she's still drifting in her mind in a half awake, half asleep state, she doesn't notice how much time has passed when she becomes aware that there's a slight glow coming through the tent, that it's getting lighter and lighter outside the tent. And then she hears that the rain has passed. She exits the tent to the most beautiful morning She can smell that smell, that it's rained on the grass, that it's rained after hot, sunny weather. She stretches, takes some deep breaths of the fresh air. She has a drink of some water has some food 
before carrying on her journey. And then notices in her pocket is a stone. And she looks at that stone and feels the stone. And wonders how it got there. Because the stone matches the stone in her dream. And she packs her tent away, carrying on her journey. And while she's walking along, she's continuing to wonder about that stone. Wondering how it got there from her dream. Wondering whether, perhaps, she'd picked it up and got no memory of it the day before whether maybe it fell in her pocket at some point. And as she continues her journey, she can see some magpies flying up into the sky from the meadow. Is the sound of a distant crow. You can hear the sounds of robins and songbirds in the trees. Watches the butterflies, the bees. And finds the whole experience deeply relaxing. And yet a part of her mind keeps coming back to wondering about the stone. And she keeps handling that stone, taking the stone out of her pocket, walking along while she's looking at the stone, feeling its softness in her fingertips. And wondering about the experience that she'd had in her dream. And she keeps telling herself the two aren't connected, that the stone must have got in her pocket some other way. And as she reaches her destination, she decides to let it go. She puts the stone in her pocket and decides to keep it anyway. Something to remember her trip by. And at her destination, she sets up a camera and it's the most beautiful valley location mountains off in the distance and she's trekked all the way here to get a photo of tonight's lunar eclipse she knows that at the point the lunar eclipse happens, the moon will be perfectly positioned between two of the mountains, and she's hoping that with the right exposure, she can get some photos, perhaps having the eclipse mirrored in the river. And even if it isn't, she's hoping to get a whole range of photos of the night and of that eclipse. And from this location, she can zoom in to make it so that that moon looks so much larger in the image compared to the foreground. And she knows that part way up the mountains, there are still trees. And for part of the eclipse, the moon will begin to go behind those trees. And zooming right in will make it look like a really large moon next to those trees. 
And she's been planning this for a long time. And once she set her camera up on the location the moon will be, and she knows she'll take other photos, she then sets her tent up. And she doesn't do a campfire, she doesn't want the additional light. And as the sun sets, she begins to get some photos of the way the light shifts and changes and how that changes the environment. How things look different when they're illuminated blue to when they're illuminated oranges and reds. To when everything's just dark. And then when the moon is illuminating everything with a silvery light. And then she takes photos. As the earth's shadow gently moves across the moon. First barely noticing. And then gradually taking more and more of a bite out of that moon. Until eventually there's just the thinnest slither of silvery moonlight left. And then the moon begins to glow red. And as that red moon hangs in the sky, she continues taking photos. And there's about 20 minutes when the moon is totally red. And she tries multiple different exposures, getting as many photos as she can. Feeling a sense of wonder, of calmness, of excitement at what she's doing. And then zooms in on the moon to get the photos as the moon begins to set behind one of the mountains. Getting the photos of the trees in front of the moon. And that setting moon carries on for some time as the eclipse carries on and a silver slither of moon appears again growing larger and larger until when half the moon is uncovered the covered half the moon is behind the mountain and so now all she can do is keep taking photos of that moon as it disappears from view. And once the moon is out of sight and the night's sky is plunged into even more darkness, she zooms back out and starts taking photos of the stars taking multiple photos of the night sky. And despite it getting later and later, there's something about the experience that helps her feel so deeply relaxed and at one with nature and in awe of the scale of the world around her. And of all the effort she went to, the trekking, abseiling, and travelling all the way here, where the only way to reach here is on foot. And all the months of planning to try and find the perfect location for the photos that she wanted to take. And now she's got those photos. 
and after many, many hours. She takes her camera into the tent, zips up the tent as the air begins to cool, and she settles down in the tent, looking through the photos that she's taken, before settling down and falling asleep. And the next morning, she awakens feeling full of energy, feeling so refreshed. And she begins her journey back the way she came. She hikes all the way back to where she camped the previous day. She realizes that she might be able to make it all the way in one journey, all in one day. She hikes to where she abseiled, and she pulls on that rope, tests the strength of that rope, and then walks up that cliff. and decides that it's easier to have come down the cliff than to be pulling yourself back up the cliff. And at the top, she unties her rope, gathers her rope up, puts that into her backpack, carries on her journey back to her car, And it's beginning to get late, so she decides to have a short break, just sleeping in her car for a moment, just a couple of hours, to recharge, refresh, to revitalize. She rests back in the car seat, in the comfort of that car. And while she's sleeping, so it begins to rain lightly and she can hear that rain on the windscreen on the roof of the car and she finds that that rain sound on the car is making it harder for her to want to wake up she's wanting to relax even deeper into the experience and so she ends up sleeping longer than expected. But when she awakens, she feels so refreshed and ready for a drive home. And it's still raining slightly, so as she drives home, she's got the window wound down a little. She can smell the rainy air outside the car. She can hear the sound of that rain on the car, on the road. The windscreen wipers moving left and right, left and right. The sound of the windscreen wipers motor moving left and right. And she carries on driving home. And as she nears her home, so she enters a more built up area. You can see the way the overhead street lights have their light reflecting on the car, almost like beams of light moving along the car, passing over the car as the car moves. The sound of the tires on the wet road. Finding the whole driving experience so relaxing and calming and looking forward to arriving home. And on arrival home, she heads indoors. 
and she sees a large parcel has been delivered for her. And on the parcel is a letter. And she opens that letter and sees that this letter says it's for her eyes only. And she reads that letter, folds that letter up, puts it back in the envelope, unwraps the item. And as she unwraps the item, she realizes that it's a painting. It's a painting of the most beautiful landscape with a cave through a cliff. And she recognizes it as the swirly painting looking place that she'd visited in her dream and instinctively then puts her hand in her pocket and feels that stone. And then hears a voice saying that someone's always watching over you, someone's always there for you, even when you think there's no one there for you. Whether you interpret that as something external to you or just your inner guidance, there's always that voice that picks you up, that tells you you can do it, that reaches out a hand to you, that smiles at you when you need it. that joins you on your journey, that's there for you, supporting you, that will motivate you and tell you, you can do this. Keep going. And somehow, she understands this and understands this voice. And she places that painting above the fireplace. She sits down in a chair, gazing over at that painting. She then hears this sound from another room of her daughter practicing the harp. She closes her eyes listening to that gentle music in the background and sitting in that seat with her eyes closed, listening to that music. She suddenly feels a sense of deep peace and relaxation and decides to go to bed. She says goodnight to her daughter, tells her daughter how lovely the playing is, how proud she is of her daughter. Now she looks forward to hearing more tomorrow. She heads to bed, gets into bed, puts that stone down next to the light on her bedside table. And drifts and floats, so comfortably asleep, knowing she'll awaken in the morning feeling so full of energy, feeling revitalized, knowing that overnight her mind will have gone through its own healing process of psychologically healing and her body will go through its process of physically healing so that she can awaken in the morning 
feeling refreshed and ready to carry on with the day. And as she drifts and floats asleep, she begins to drift into the most pleasant, most wonderful dreams of healing, of well-being, of pleasure and excitement and happiness and drifts asleep with a smile on her face, sleeping and relaxing through the night.